welcome back. And we are moving into our first conversation for today. We're talking about education and the role of teachers. We're joined at this time by the president of the Belize National Teachers Union, Senator Elena Smith. Good morning Good and morning. welcome. Thank you for having me. Now, we know that we are leading up to uh, the celebration of Teacher's Day, and it is a month where education is on display uh, in its different methodologies. But this is a great time for us to really focus on one of the important elements of our education system, and that is the teachers. So let's, let's just start off by getting an update on uh, some of the happenings with BNTU. We know there, were, uh, there was a very important decision made this weekend. Um, the teachers were informed that they would dock their pay for the uh, protest, for those who attended the protests against crime. Um, and the BNTU has made a decision for that. Let's get started there. Yes, let me just backtrack a bit. Yes. Um, we had a meeting where we met with ministry and management, mm -hmm. um, a joint staff relations council meeting. And at that meeting, we queried because we were hearing from our members that um, they were being told that salaries would be docked. And so we asked the question and the management responded to say that yes, they had a meeting and most of them agreed that they would dock salaries for that day. Mm -hmm. That was their decision. Um, you know, we just said to them, well, you, you, know, you will do what you do and we will do what we have to do. Mm -hmm. um, so we met on Saturday and we reviewed the matter and the teachers made the decision that for those managements who insist on docking pay, for those teachers who stood up for our children and for women, that any contributions to those managements from our teachers' salaries would be withheld. Mm -hmm. And so those contributions would be withheld indefinitely. Mm -hmm. So we are aware that some managements do ask teachers to provide from them out of their salaries. Some would ask for a percent of their salary, and some would ask for a contribution towards either the management or the church. Mm -hmm. And these funds are used for different reasons for the upkeep of the church, I guess for the parish, for the management, to pay salaries for the manager, mm -hmm. um, to provide workshops for teachers, various activities that they, they hold. And so while a month's contribution would not be equivalent to a day's salary for many teachers, the continuous um, withholding of that contribution should have an impact on these managements. Now, to be very clear, is it all school managers who are saying that they will dock the one-day salary? No. We were not given the, the, the names of the management who would be docking, but we were told that most of them agreed to. Mm -hmm. And so we are assuming that probably the bigger managements, a few of the smaller ones. Mm -hmm. And we have heard of a few who have said to their teachers that they would not be docking salaries. Um, I can say, for example, the Nazarene management, mm -hmm. we were told that they would not be docking. And so the Catholic was the first one that we heard from. And it was the Catholic manager who was the one who responded to my question to say that, yes, they met and they made that decision. OK. What is your reaction to this decision being made uh, in a response to the protest that was held? If I could only say what I would want to say. <laughs> the TV um, man. <laughs> Are you surprised? But not quite. Not quite surprised because we do understand that management sometimes um, feel that there are certain things that they must do. However, managements need to understand the rules and they need to be clear when they make certain decisions. The rules are very clear that the docking of salaries are for when we are in industrial dispute. And so it serves as a means of punishing for taking these actions. Mm -hmm. Now holding a rally we were not in any strike mode. We were not in any industrial action at the time. We were simply having a rally to say that, look, we have had enough of our children being abused, being killed, and our women being abused and killed. And so we wanted to make a statement. So nowhere in that did we ever mention that we were in a protest mode or we were in strike mode or any of that sort of thing. Were you warned of potential repercussions when the rally was being organized? Well, we are always aware that that is a possibility because the rule says that the management may. Mm -hmm. And so we know that some will look at the cause and they would say, you know, well, it's a good one. And so they would um, refrain from doing so, while others, because they can, they will. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, some people want to give them power. It doesn't matter. They will use that power. Well, what I can understand, though, is you dock my pay because I did not give you value. 
-hmm. And so what, what is the loss to management? And do they not value the wider educational teaching point that you're not disconnected from the social realities? And, and that was the first reaction of a lot of our teachers, because these managements, a lot of them are church, state management, church, mm -hmm. state schools. And so we preach Christianity. And so we teach and we preach that we must look out for our brothers, you know, keepers, and, and that our children are special in God's sight and that kind of thing. And so to hear from one of the biggest management um, saying that they would be docking is like, so then what are you teaching? And so what are you doing when you go to church on Sundays and you sit in front of the altar or you go and you serve communion to people and you are telling them that go, you know, leave from here, you know, you, you go forth and you go and you spread the good news. What good news are we spreading? If we are saying to teachers that to stand up for your students who are hurting and for our teachers who have to, we have to understand that when these children go through this trauma, who suffers with them? The teacher, because they come to school, and a lot of times some of them might not be able to vent at home. Mm -hmm. And so when they come to school, they vent to us. Mm -hmm. And so then that takes a toll on you, the teacher, because you have these children to deal with. It's, it's an emotional thing that you have to go through. And so if our managements, who, who are Christian managements, can't see that. Senator, is it something more sinister? Could it be that it's not about them not seeing the value of it? Could it be just an economic thing that they're strapped for cash and they look at the absences of the teacher as a money-saving mechanism? Well, who will be saving the money? Management, if I don't have to pay teachers. But management entirety, don't pay teachers. Well, they the don't. government pays the teachers. Wow, so And so when salaries are docked from us, those must be sent back to the ministry. So the money goes to the government. Good thought. So management won't be losing any funds as such. They don't pay us anything. Wow. As a matter of fact, let me just go further. Simply to provide the materials for the classroom, that managements are responsible for providing certain things for your classroom to ensure that your classroom has, that they, it's conducive to learning. How much of that do managements provide? And how much of that do teachers provide? And if you were to ask a teacher come August, how much money they have spent in the classroom? Huh. It is nothing less than 500 up to 1,000, 1,500, just for the beginning of the school year. And that's not counting what you spend yeah. from mm -hmm. September to I've June. Seen it. Even yeah. with the posters and all yeah. the different. Yeah. The exactly. And then we are told that it's because we want to do that. <laughs> Who would be spending unnecessary money? Then yet when you come to assess me, when you come to give me a grade, you look for these things on my wall. You look for these things in my classroom. And if I don't have certain things, I get a one or I get a two, but if I have a bright classroom, you know, everything is up, I get a four or a five. So, you know, I, I'm trying to, to, to put this in perspective in terms of, of how the wider public would see it. I know that oftentimes parents have, are the first to con complain when the children are not in school. Mm -hmm. And perhaps this is part of the reaction that we're seeing from government and uh, the school managers. When you create a rally to talk about a social issue, I mean, we, we had children being mm -hmm. shot in the streets. Mm -hmm. uh, p teachers are trying to explain to the, the rest of the class why their classmate is never coming back. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, women being killed, abused. There were so many issues, particularly at that time when you held the rally. Did you feel, or did, do your teachers speak of having the support of the parents? in having the children not be at school that day? There were many parents who supported us. Mm -hmm. um, you might not see or hear them coming out to say, you know, I support, but a lot of them would come to school and, and, you know, and they would say, Miss, I'm not sending my child tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know, or he's not coming. You let me know when you'll be back and I send him when you come back. Mm -hmm. But as long as you are out, I won't send my child. So while we do have some parents who tend to see teachers as babysitters, they would be the ones who would get annoyed. Then we have those parents who are concerned that their children will be losing out. Genuine concern. You know, a day for my child, my child is maybe already slow, my child has already missed out on certain things, exam coming up. You saw you have those parents who are genuinely concerned about the child's education. Mm -hmm. And then you have those parents who fully support the actions that we do because they understand the implications of what we are doing on them and their children. Mm -hmm. And so 
when we look at the parents who have these genuine concerns, we say to them, listen, if you have an exam, let's say this week, for example, mm -hmm. and school, we take a day next like week before, mm -hmm. that child was preparing for that exam from infant one all the way up to standard six for PAC. It didn't start in standard six. It didn't start in fourth form. Mm -hmm. It's a process, and so the child begins at infant one, and you go right through, and you prepare. Yes, some children do need additional help, and teachers have morning classes, they have evening classes, they have Saturday classes. So teachers make up. We have teachers who take students to their homes and give them extra classes out mm -hmm. of their own free heart, out of their own kind heart. Mm -hmm. And so teachers, despite what people say, we find the time to make up with our children. If it means that for today, you are going to have PE, but you know what, we'll do PE for 10 minutes instead of a half an hour, and I will take that other 20 minutes and do math, we will do that. Mm -hmm. So we find ways and means of making up for children. So it's not that the children are losing out. And as you said earlier, education is not only within the four walls of the classroom. Because our children have to learn to cope out there. When you get in an argument, how do you resolve that? Right. You go and shoot? Mm -hmm. Right? So we have to deal with that as well. Let me ask a question. A few weeks ago, actually a few months ago, there was the 20,000 march. Uh, and schools participated, teachers participated. Mm -hmm. Were you compensated for that day? <laughs> and, and let me tell you, that is one of the reasons why our teachers are angry. Because the ministry met with management, uh, I think it was on a Wednesday. We met with the ministry on the Thursday. <clears throat> and the CEO explained that she, when she spoke with the manager, she said to them, you, I will suggest to you that you go back, poll your teachers to see you know, what the responses are going to be. If it is that you need to apply for a non-school day, do so. What is that telling you? Of all the schools and the teachers we spoke with, none of them said to us that the management <coughs> came to them to say, which school, how many of you will be going? And do we have enough teachers to keep this school open for this day? Had they done that, they could have applied for the non-school day. Now, as a union, we wrote to the ministry to say, listen, we are requesting that you give this non-school day because this is a worthy cause. Mm -hmm. The ministry, the CEO was clear that the ministry had no intentions of docking teachers' salary because they understood the cause that we were standing up for. Mm -hmm. So we applied, we wrote to, this, to, the, to the chief, and to this date, we have not had a response. And in the meeting, I said like this, I said, not even to say, dog, we got your letter. Hmm. Wow. Nothing. They could have written back to say, your letter was received. Unfortunately, as a union, you do not have the authority or you are not um, 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 responsible for applying for such a leave. It should come from at least that, yeah. nothing at all. So our teachers feel that, listen, if you could have given a day for 20,000 strong, why can't you give us a day for our children too, to do the same? Because we would be doing the same or something similar to what 20,000 did. I want to commend the teachers because as much as the teachers had a rally and management had its issues with that, no other entity had a rally. The church didn't. Mm -hmm. Right now in where we are historically, the most credible entity in this country, even senatorially, are the teachers, more so than the church. Mm -hmm. Does it bother you that other stakeholders who should be supporting in a frontal way um, are not fulfilling their role as they should? Of course it does, especially when you see some of these same churches getting up and speaking on matters that I don't want to say um, don't concern them, but things of this nature that has to do with our children, their safety. These managements, these churches are responsible. They have schools to manage because we have children going to their schools. And so without these children, they wouldn't have any schools to manage. And so again, how can you have this responsibility and not feel a sense of wanting to protect these children who are under your care? And so 
we are quite disappointed, but you have to look at it from another angle. Is it that BNTU continues to be punished yeah. for over 11 days of standing up? That could be the reason why we are getting the resistance that we are getting from these, these groups. Because we have to understand too you know, that some of these managements are paid by government. And so while some time ago these managements were paid by the church who, and that they represented or who they represented, many of them are now paid by government. And we know what people say. Who pays the piper cars too, right? Well, as I said, you have uh, made a decision in terms of how you would respond. The teachers have made a, res uh, a decision over the weekend. Um, and one of the things we know is that you have your mechanisms in place to use your uh, different branches to make your decisions right. collectively. I want to move on because I really don't want to miss the opportunity to talk about some of the same issues that are coming out here. And that is the evolving role of teachers within the education system. Now, edu the education system is typically considered a tripartite uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, approach. Mm -hmm. You have the ministry, the government, we have the teachers, and we have the parents, and, and all of these, these entities together work to ensure that the children of this country can be properly educated. Um, I, it, in the context of what we see today, I imagine that the job of a teacher has perhaps gotten even more challenging. Um, if we use Belize City as mm -hmm. the example, because that's where we are located and it's the most relevant issue, crime, poverty, um, and even sometimes the involvement or lack of involvement of parents contribute towards a, 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 an additional challenge that I feel that, that teachers must encounter mm -hmm. in schools. What does the union do in terms of having teachers either learn or find cope ways to cope or even just be able to vent the frustration of having this reality to deal with now. And what are they saying about the classrooms? Teachers are becoming more and more frustrated. The workload has become too much. And we find that a lot of our good teachers who were persons who, from the end of the profession, love the profession. We have persons who do something because they, they truly love it. Mm -hmm. For me, I don't see myself doing any other job but teaching. So if I were to come back again, that would be my dream job again. Um, it was always something that I wanted to do. And so we have a lot of teachers who are like that. We do have teachers who are in the profession because that's the easiest job for them to get. We can't shy away from that. Mm -hmm. We have teachers who use the profession as a stepping stone. So I come and I teach for a little while. I save some money. I work with government. I apply for a scholarship. I go and I study law. Right, so I started out as a teacher, I come back as a liar. Because teaching doesn't make no money, so you know, liar make money. So <laughs> you know, the liars can afford to give a week's salary out of their pay, but teachers can't give a day, right? <laughs> so we do have those different scenarios. When we look at the number of things that teachers are expected to do within a week, and you look at the time that we have, time hasn't changed. You have the same Mondays to Fridays, the same school hours, you might have, and some of them will say to, to us, well, your class size reduced. Yes, the class size reduced. But the children that we have today, 30 years ago, 33 years ago, when I began teaching, the children that I taught 33 years ago are nothing compared to what I have now. Because oh. now I have a five-year-old who can come and tell me that he will bring his dad to shoot me. Or I have a five-year-old who, when I say to please sit down and do your work, would take his chair and throw it at me, or will bite me or will kick me. You have children in four, five, and six who actually hit teachers. So you have to spend a lot more time on the emotional part of the child. And so it takes away sometimes from your actual teaching time because you can't teach with a class that is disruptive or a child who's disrupting a class. Mm -hmm. And so you have to time out and so when you do all of these things, these things take away from your actual teaching time. Mm -hmm. So you have to be a nurse. We were always that. Mm -hmm. You have to be a mommy. Because the children come to school and something happened at night and, and, and you have to sit and talk with them and you have to calm them down and get them ready for school. 
you have to counsel them, you have to be the priest and the nun for them, you know, you have to be daddy for them. So sometimes you have to actually act, you know, and, and change your voice to sound like a man in the classroom for the children to, you know, have that kind of relationship. There are so many things that we have to do as teachers. Yet, you have to teach them all the lessons that they must learn and you have to teach them to be able to cope when they go there. So, so, there's, so there's been a, 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 a greater challenge in terms of discipline. Yes. I, I know recently we passed the, the law banning corporal punishment in right. school. Was that a, how has that been panning out? From, from the time that occurred, teachers were saying that, listen, if you are going to take away something from me, give me something else. Mm -hmm. Just don't come and tell me something else is there. Because we grew up with spanking. So that was our way of disciplining our children. That was all we knew. Mm -hmm. I did it as a teacher. I did it. To I, this got day, it I got it as a student. Right? Regularly. <laughs> so to this day, we have a few <laughs> children who might still be angry with me because, you know, I whipped. But that was all we knew. And I keep, whenever I meet them, I would say to them, you know, did I lash you when you were in my class? You asked me, sir, no, miss. I said, okay, you know, if they said yes, I'm sorry, but that was all I knew. Now we know other ways of disciplining children, but our teachers must be properly trained in these methods. Mm -hmm. Because if we are not trained in something, we can also do damage. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. We say that time out is one of the things that we can use to discipline a child. Mm -hmm. So you know how the teachers would take these um, refrigerator boxes and, and, you know, and, and you make your little house out of it? Mm -hmm. So the children can go in there and you know pretend as if though you know they're in the movies and they're acting whatever. So the teacher made one of that and she had it in in a corner, it had it marley on the floor, it had curtains, everything. She had a little desk and a chair in there, and the child was giving a little trouble and she said, "I'll give you some time out." So she put the child in the little house you know, for some time out. So you're away from the other children. Nobody can look at you, tease you. Nobody can nothing. Yeah. The child apparently went home and said to the parent that the, child, the teacher put her in there for the whole day mm -hmm. and that there were spi big spiders were in the box and she was so afraid she thought she was going to die. The teacher was almost fired for that. So you tell me I should use time out. I try my best to use it the way I know how. But if a child complains, even if it's not true, yeah. I am the person who is wrong because I'm the adult there. So I am wrong. I scared the child. I frightened the child. You deserve to be disciplined. You know, I think that's one of the things that I can only imagine is a continuous challenge. And from the parents' perspective, I think it's only natural that they will always believe their children. Mm -hmm. your, yep. uh, your baby is your yeah. baby. Yep. And uh, I, I think that that is something that, that you can understand will happen from the parents' mm -hmm. perspective. Now, and, and I think it's an important issue because where we talk about teachers so often, and I, I have to say, it, I think every single person, no matter where they are in their life, can credit something positive or multiple teachers with something positive, making an impact in career, mm -hmm. in, in values, in some, some teachers help turn you back on the yep. straight road mm -hmm. because it's such an influential <coughs> role in your life as a child. But it is not without its challenges. And I appreciate that you said that there are some people who are in this profession because it's a job. Yeah. And uh, as you have said, it's, it's very important that you have to love what you do and want to mm -hmm. do this because it's not a money-making profession. As much as people think, oh, you get extended holiday, you're tied up in mm -hmm. workshops or after hours. Um, but what are you doing to work to build a more professional group of teachers as a union? So you hear the complaints, you know some are warranted, many are not. Mm -hmm. But obviously as a union, you have, as a union, you do have the responsibility to work with them as well. Right. How does the union provide that support to ensure that the teachers will maintain the best of the best in their profession? We have been having several workshops for teachers. Um, one of the things that we try our best not to do is to pull them out of the classroom mm -hmm. during peak times. Mm -hmm. So if you know, you know, it's review week, exam week, that kind of thing, we try not to move them out. So if you notice when we did our, our rally, we tried to do it like the day before the holiday started yeah. because we knew that it would not be disrupting as much as it would had we done it earlier. And so a lot of our sessions are held on weekends. So we do have um, training for teachers in areas like reading because we know that that is a weakness. Mm -hmm. um, 
we look at classroom management because we knew that teachers didn't help there. And then last year we had this relationship with this group of teachers, with professors from um, Kentucky University. And so they came and they offered training for not only teachers but principals as well. And so what we are doing this year, last year when we did that, that, that one week session, it was done at, it, during the same week that the ministry had their workshop. Mm -hmm. And so it was a lot, a lot of mess because some teachers wanted to attend our workshop because of the topics we were offering. Mm -hmm. But they were told by their schools that they had to attend certain workshops. And so, you know, they were like here one day and there another day. And that, so it, <coughs> because teachers complain that the ministry offers the same things over and over and over. Yeah. You get bored. I myself am bored because when I go to a workshop, it's been what, 30 years, 33 years. And I've never missed workshops any year. And you sort of hear the same things over and over. So you, you, you get bored. You want something new. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing this year, we are taking one week out of our teacher's holiday. Mm -hmm. And we are doing that training from August. We are moving it up to July. So our teachers will be short one week of holiday so that they can educate themselves so that when they go to the classroom, they have some, a bit of knowledge on reading disabilities, on special education, on teaching reading, medicine to your classroom, and all of these other areas that we are going to be doing. Um, we did a session on leading from the heart. How do we as teachers <coughs> um, lead our children with love and compassion? Because a lot of us, we're not compassionate. You know, that part of us, I don't know where it went. I don't know if it's a violence that has hardened us. So how do we work with our children? How do we manage them with love and compassion? And so these are things that we, as I said, we don't have the resources do as much as we'd want to do but we try our best to do our part as a partner mm -hmm. in educating our teachers in these areas I'd, I'd like to go to that part of shortening the holiday for teachers mm -hmm. my mother was a teacher um, for many years and the value of having that summer vacation to detach from being a teacher from being a, mm -hmm. a, a policeman a priest and coming back fresh was something that actually had more benefit mm -hmm. to me, to the kids, than it did to say, OK, well, you have more of holiday than everybody else. Mm -hmm. But there is a move currently by a ministry or by whoever to erode sure. that time frame. There's a lot of time when teachers used to go away to study. They would you know, spend the time to spend time family with themselves. Time. With, their time. Mm -hmm. with, with their, their own, own children. With their own children. Because unlike other professions, lawyers included, mm -hmm. Um, when you go home, you go home with all of the... Your hands are free. Your mind, everything is free. Yes. So my thing is, should, we not, should teachers not be going the opposite direction of getting more free time? That summer vacation should be us almost be, you know... Sacred, right? Sacred. <laughs> and I, I, I do agree because, and if you could recall, even during that summer vacation, if your mother went anywhere and she saw a box, oh, I, this can yes, be used uh, for this. Don't throw away that. And if she was watching TV and she saw something, I can use that for this. And, and she would be reading. And before school open, they start their construction Exactly. Work. And so you're going to the, and so while she's at home, she might be on a holiday, but she's making her alphabet. She's making her little corner. She's making her games, that Bulletin kind of thing. Board. So she has the entire two months to pace herself and make these things because she would have known what class she would be getting for September and she could pace herself and make these things. Now, what happens to us now, we're on holiday in July, and then as soon as August begins, Our it's chance. like horse race. And you just go, 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 that when September comes and school begins, you are tired. All right. Because for the entire month, because you are on call for the entire month, ministry, management, principal, this one call you, the other one call you, it's like you're back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. And so teachers do need the rest. And you will hear a lot of teachers saying, that if you maybe look at statistics, you might find that a lot of the divorce cases or a lot of the single parent households might be um, teachers. No, man. Because of the time that you spend doing your work, a lot of times the spouse can't cope with it because it's like you're at school early in the morning, you come home late, when you get on your for the do lesson plan, check papers, you don't have time for, for the husband, you don't have time for the children. Or for the wife, because you have both yeah, male and right. female. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but the men know how to get around. So. <laughs> but it's so, you know, it, and I think we don't talk very often about uh, the challenges that teachers mm -hmm. do have. 
you know, I, let me step back because I have a question in, in terms of the union itself. How are you doing in terms of membership? Because we always would hear the criticism that, oh, it's not as representative of the teachers in this country as we'd like to assume it is. Talk to us about the representation. We don't have as many as we would want to have. Mm -hmm. um, we have about 6,000 or so teachers mm -hmm. in country. country. Right. We probably have about half of that. And so we would like to have more than that. Mm -hmm. um, the ideal would be you know, 90% or more. But we have to understand, too, that there's another teachers' union mm -hmm. up in Orange Rock, and that, that union, I think, serves the Orange Rock district. And it's not a big union. Um, so their union would compare to one of our rural branches. Okay. But we do need to find more time to do more campaigning with, among teachers, you know, to get more membership. Mm -hmm. It's a bit difficult. I have tried, and I know several presidents before me have tried, to visit schools more often during the course of the year. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. Because you plan, and then next thing you know, you, you have a meeting here, and you have a meeting there, and then a, a case comes up, and you have to go to deal with a case, and you know, so yeah. it is, especially if you want to visit the rural schools, it will take you a whole day or more to visit some of these areas. Mm -hmm. I took one day, and by the time I got to, to Boom, because I was going through that area, by the time I got to Boil Boom, I got a call. My mom was had to be rushed, so I, I had to rush back. Mm -hmm. So I was hoping to reach to Rancho that day. Yeah. I've not been back. So. Can, can I ask, um, in terms of, because we are very, <coughs> a lot of times, city centric and population centric, mm -hmm. but how, how, how are teachers doing in the rural areas? Is, are we, are teachers being, is special attention being given to um, teachers in, in these areas? Well, remember we have the different district branches would serve their members' concerns. Now, all of our district executive members are full-time teachers. So they cannot take time out and go and visit as they would. But they have mechanisms, you know, WhatsApp, you know, um, school reps who would bring to them concerns of these members. And uh, as best as we could, we try to reach out to them. Again, there is much more that we can do if we were able to, to get to better get to these teachers' time, mm -hmm. because we have to deal with a lot of other issues. And because there's only one person in the office who deals with cases, which is Ms. Keisha, our executive secretary, then there are times when both of us have cases to deal with, or both of us have to work together to deal with a case. Yeah. And it's difficult, it's really difficult to get out. What would you say is the primary challenge that the union is, uh, is, is continuously hearing from teachers in Belize? I would say workload mm -hmm. and lack of, um, or not getting their benefits on time. Mm -hmm. A lot of teachers will be surprised, don't get pay on time. The increments, some teachers are without increments for three years. Some of them five years, they haven't gotten their increments. Um, teachers get benefits such as commuting allowance or hardship allowance. So if you teach in a, in a rural area that is difficult to get, you get an additional allowance for the hardship that you have to go through to, to, to teach at those, them. right. Yeah. They are to get those things in September. Some of them in school is over and they, they don't receive their benefits. And so I have to be commuting or I have to be teaching at this hardship school for the entire school year. Yeah. And all I'm getting is the $200 that you give me. But at the end of every month, I can't get that. Because, and when you go and you check, we, we keep checking. Oh, but the management says it's the ministry. The ministry says yes. it's the management. And we cannot put a handle on who is to blame. Because when we go to one area, we say, we didn't get the form and see, I didn't get it, we checked, we didn't get it. Because, but I sent it from two weeks ago or from a month ago, and yeah. it's a back and forth, back and forth. We do have where teachers' documents have been lost via their management and via the ministry. We had a teacher who applied for her license a year before, almost a year before, and she sent it to her, 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 her um, district management, her, her district ed center. Those documents were lost. The teacher thought that the documents were submitted when she asked yes. She was told, yes, miss, I sent them in. 
I sent them to so and so on this date. When she said time was going and she wasn't hearing anything, her license would be up. She needed to get, you know, when she checked, they, they had no documents for her. Luckily, she, you know, she had correspondence from this person to say, yes, I sent it in. And I, th I think it was e either text or, or email. Mm -hmm. And so she could have gone to say, listen, it's not my fault. I applied a year before. Mm -hmm. The manager said it was sent in. It's not my fault. She, but the teacher had to go and apply all over for her certificates from abroad, transcripts, everything. And so, you know, it took another process another and it cost time. her some more again. So those are some of the major issues. If we could get our teachers to get their benefits on time, increments, hardship allowance, committing allowance, it would make things much easier because a lot of those same ones that those teachers get go right back into the classroom. And right. uh, what about the workload issue? What is the complaint there? You said we class have sizes are smaller, right? For, for, for not all schools, mm -hmm. not all schools, are not, not all areas. When it comes to workload, Marlene, we have where as time changes, the curriculum would change. Yes. When we change these things, a lot of times we do not get sufficient teacher input into these things. Mm -hmm. And so we might get persons who are in leadership positions who would go and give their suggestions. Mm -hmm. But the teachers who have to carry out these things, we don't hear enough from them. And the ministry will say to you, but we consult. Yes, you consult, but how much or how well do you consult? Mm -hmm. How many teachers do you reach out to when you want to put these things together? And so you get complaints that, listen, these things are confusing. <clears throat> the one before was better. I have something new. I was not shown how to do it. I don't know how to do it because, not because we are teachers, we know everything. People tend to think that, oh, but, but you're a teacher, you, you're supposed to know that. That's not so. Because if you make a change that I'm not familiar with, I have to go and learn about that. What if I am learning from the wrong source? Then I'm teaching the wrong things. I'm teaching not necessarily the concept, but the way I am teaching it or the way I have it set out might not be the proper way. I might not have it set out um, so in a they way have that to it create flows. their own plans and new plans based right? on the new curriculum. And so some of them are indeed difficult. And I will tell you, especially when it comes to language arts, teachers have issues with language arts. Why? I don't know. That's my favorite subject. So I, for yeah. me, I, I don't understand, but for a teacher who doesn't like, I don't like math. Mm -hmm. So if you give me a math curriculum, I would be lost. Because I would know how to break up that, that outcome or, or that yeah. big area into smaller bits and pieces. I don't like math. Mm -hmm. I love language arts. So give me that, I can plan a lesson for you with my eyes closed. You give me a topic and I can tell you this, 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 and let's yeah. go. Yeah. Right? So we have teachers who are like that. And so we have to provide for them the means for them to be able to understand properly so that then they can take that document and use it the proper way. Because yeah. at the end of the day, who, who is the end product? The students. Then can I ask you, <coughs> there's, there's been an evolving phenomenon of private schools. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what is the divide between the private schools and the public schools? Is there, are they on par? What, is there any divide at all? We do have some primary schools who match up to the standards of these um, private schools. Castle New. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do have, performance wise, we do have regular public schools who are at same level or even higher than some in of these private schools. Yeah. Maybe not with resources. Because when you look at these private schools, who are the people who go to private schools? Maybe your child, I don't know. Mine does, yes. Okay, see? So mm -hmm. parents who have a little bit more that they can provide for their children, a little bit more resources for their children. Yeah. Parents who can afford to pay for a tutor. You know, parents who have the time or who have somebody to drop off the kids and pick them up. You know, you, you, you have a computer, a laptop mm -hmm. at school, you take a tablet, that kind of thing. Take, for example, a school on Wesley Lower or St. Ignatius or St. Martins. While we have parents who can afford um, at those schools, children, their children go to those schools. They are the minority. And so the majority of those children are children who come from areas from broken homes, from areas with a lot of issues. And so if as a child, 
you are not focused. Mm -hmm. You are hungry. Your mom, your father beat you every day. You know, you come to school with weed. We have five-year-olds who come to school and they will tell you that they, before they come to school every day they smoke. No, tell me, compare that child to your child. And tell me how is it that I can get that child to your level. I'm not saying I can't. Mm -hmm. But what will it take for me to get what this what? child to the level of your child? No. So by the time I, I, I get no. to that first level, your child would have jumped three more. And the class sizes are significantly different exactly, as well. Exactly, right. Yeah. And I the, think that's and, always one area And the one things area that, that they teach too, I mean, you know, you know, the way they go through their, their, their um, yeah. because remember the private schools don't necessarily follow what the public schools do because they don't go by what's in the education rules for the most part. And so they are able to order these expensive books from abroad and, you know, and, uh, and better books for their children while our children have to be using you know, the, the books that, that government provides. Yeah. And if I'm a parent who, <coughs> from one of these areas, but I really want to invest in my child, and my child is attending my favorite outside school, which is um, Calvary Temple Primary School, mm -hmm. what can I do to, to assist to get my child to be on the same level as a Bernice York or a Hummingbird? You see, we keep saying that every child can learn. But the environment that we have enables the child to learn. And so as a parent, if you have the means, then I would suggest to you that you work with your child's teacher. What are some of the things that the, or even the principal, what are some of the things that the school would need for your school to improve? For example, if reading grades are low, what do you need to improve in reading? I can, let's say, um, pay for a teacher to come in and do a session with your teachers. Mm -hmm. I can get together with some other parents, do a fundraising, and we are going to be buying some books for your library. We are going to be buying some listening devices, whatever it is that, that yeah. these schools need. Some blocks that you can put your little sight words on, the children can play um, dice and, you know, that kind be of thing. Be involved. So you yeah. can offer as much as you can. You can, every time I go to the States, bring back two books for the classroom, yeah. that kind of thing. Well, we're completely out of time, but what I do want to say is I, I want to give you the opportunity because obviously this is a great uh, way to speak to teachers across the country as well, just about uh, remembering the importance of their role in the education system, especially as we lead up to Teachers' Day. Well, let me just first uh, remind our teachers that for this year, we should be celebrating Education Day nationally. Mm -hmm. Um, however, we have many teachers who are worried about the crime situation in the city and they have chosen not to come to Belize City to celebrate that day. They prefer to go to school and, as opposed to coming to a crime-ridden city. Wow. We cannot blame them because they have to consider their safety. Yeah. And so we, we understand that. We want to remind them though that Teacher's Day is not a holiday. And so it's either that you join the celebration or then you report to school as per normal. So I want to get that out there yes. um, um, first. Should any school or any branch decide to do something differently, they can be penalized for that. And we do not want our teachers to suffer any more than they are already suffering. So you can't afford another day to be ducked out of your Yeah. So your, your options salary. are school <coughs> or Belize City Civic Center? Right. OK. Now, let me then know, say to our teachers, thank you so very much for all the hard work that you do. Mm. Our teachers can never be repaid for all that they do. And we do understand that this is a profession that is not much appreciated. Teachers don't get enough thank yous. Um, so it's an entire month. I want to, to, to encourage the parents and, and the public in general, even if you don't have a child at a particular school, if you can send a small token to a teacher during this month, whether it's a pencil, whether you go and you pick a hibiscus off a tree and you give to a teacher, Take a day out of this month and make a teacher's day. Just so simply say, thank you for all that you do. We work for the children and we work for our country. And BNTU will continue to stand up for Blaze. It doesn't matter what we have to go through. We will continue to stand up. So teachers, thank you. Have a wonderful teacher's day and a wonderful education month.
Thank you very much for being here. We appreciate it. We're going to shift gears now, and when we come back, we'll be talking about World Red Cross Day after the break, so stay tuned.